Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Dawa NVR to have an alarm output. Now over here, I have a siren. I've also got a floodlight. And on the back of the NVR, there are some connections. Now, the first thing is not all NVRs have this option for an alarm output and input. In this case, there is an option for a relay, and I will show it to you shortly. And then you've got some alarm connections. Some NVRs even have a little power supply here, a 12 volt source. Now, this NVR is the 4216. And on this NVR, I'm going to show how one can set up an alarm condition. If I move my hand in front of the camera, it can actually set off an alarm. Maybe you want a siren or maybe you want a floodlight to go off. Maybe you want to be emailed. There are many options available. So I'm going to take you through this step by step. Right, on your NVR, you have an alarm option. Now, when I go to the alarm option, I have alarm info here on my alarms that have already taken place on this day. Yours will be populated once you've set up your alarm settings. Now, over here, it says alarm status. At the moment, there is an alarm taking place, and that is because I've unplugged the network cable to the NVR. Now, here is alarm input. In this video, I'm not going to be showing how to do the alarm input. I'm going to be showing how to use the video detection in order to initiate an alarm output. So that means that if somebody moves on your property or you've set a tripwire or whatever type of motion detection you've set, once it detects that motion or once the rule was violated, then the NVR must output to a siren or to a floodlight. And I'm going to show you how to set that up and I'm going to go through the settings and then I'm going to show you how to set it up with the siren or the light. Okay, the first thing we need to do is enable such alarm. So I've chosen video detection. Now I know that on some NVRs these options are in different orders or the layout is slightly different. So I go to video detection. Now it says D1. I only have one camera connected. In your case, you may have 16, you may have 32. So in my case, I'm just using D1. So I'm going to set the alarm based on camera channel D1. If, if your camera is five, then you'll choose D5. Now you can even set the region for your alarm. Notice it's red. On the Dawa NVR, red indicates alarm condition. So for example, if you only want the alarm to be in, in say this part over here, then you will highlight the part that you want. Now, at the moment, my camera is just facing the ceiling, and that is why you're seeing this funny view. This is the wall, and over here is the wooden ceiling. Now, in my case, I'm just going to select the whole section. Now, don't forget to apply your changes. Right, now I must enable it. In your case, it's probably disabled, so just enable it. Right, now over here, it says period, and when I click on it, you can see all these yellow bars. Now what this means is the times that the video detection will allow that alarm output function. Meaning maybe you don't want the alarm function to work during weekdays. So maybe you go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from say 7.30 all the way to say 6 o'clock. What that means is the video detection will not initiate alarm during these times. Maybe because your staff are at work and obviously they are going to be triggering this alarm. So you don't want them to be triggering the alarm. So you are deactivating the motion detection for alarm feature. You're not deactivating motion detection as a whole. You're just deactivating the trigger for the alarm output. For example, if I go back to the storage and I go to the schedule, you can see that I still have the motion detection for my channel one and for my other channels. But here in the alarm section under video detection, motion detection for alarm output, I'm setting that the alarm trigger will only take place outside of these hours, which means the whole day Sunday, the whole day Saturday, and then Monday to Friday, not during these working hours. Maybe you want it all the time, well then you will just make sure all of this looks like that. So you can set the schedule for when the alarm output will work or when it won't work. Now it says anti-dither. This is the time that the alarm is going to sound for plus the time that the alarm is in the latch mode. When I connect the siren or the light, you'll see that working. Now it says alarm output. So what we've done is we've told the NVR that channel D1 is now enabled in the whole field of view. And when there's motion, set an alarm. So here yours is probably like that. And make sure you say general alarm. And now you have to select which alarm output, one or two. Now yours might have even more. 
and on the NVR, you will see these outputs. Right, so on this NVR, I've got two rows. These connectors correlate to this line over here, and the bottom connector correlates to that line over there. So working with the top connector, this terminal over here is N01. This terminal over here is C1. Now, this is actually the relay output, and that's what we are going to be working with, because what happens is when there's motion and the camera identifies motion, it closes these two contacts because these are relay contacts. It even says they're N01 and then common. So this is normally open one and then common one. And that is why on the NVR settings, it only says alarm output one or two, because on this NVR, I only have two relays. The first relay connections are there and there, and then another relay is there and there. These are independent from each other. I will still show how to connect this, but I'm just showing you the software first. So over here, when it says general alarm, it says alarm output one or two. It's actually asking you which relay contacts are you going to be using? Are you going to be using the first relay or the second relay or both? As you can see, you can also select both. Now inside the NVR, there are actually two relays and I will still show you them to you shortly. Now it says show message. What that is, is if an alarm takes place, a message comes up on the screen. For example, I'm back here at the live view and watch what happens when I move. You see, I'm moving something in the field of view of that camera and notice an alarm status message comes up. So that's what that message is. So if you want that message, you'll select here. You can also set an alarm upload rule and you can even send an email to yourself or to the user to notify them of an alarm condition. Now it says record channel. These are additional settings. You don't have to have this on already. If a motion detection takes place in the view of the camera, it'll already activate the alarm. These settings over here are just additional settings which you are telling the NVR to take some further action once an alarm condition has taken place. So do you want to record a channel? So in this case, I've said yes, record channel one. Now it would record channel one anyway because channel one was already set to motion detection. Maybe you've got other cameras here. If there's motion detection or intrusion on camera one, I want to record on all the cameras for 10 seconds, for example. So you could do that. You could select your other cameras to record. You can even set a PTZ activation. You can also set a tour if you want the camera to pan across your area. Then you can also set some picture storage and then the buzzer. Now I have selected the buzzer. I want to hear the little doot 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 telling me that there's been an alarm condition and then you can also select a log. Now finally there's an alarm output tab here. If this is in the off position you are overriding your alarm outputs and you are then switching them off. So if I have it like this, I'm literally disconnecting those relays. So make sure that yours is on the auto position. Over here, the status, what that's telling you is the current position of the relay. So if I trigger an alarm now, and then I apply, you can see that output one is now activated. So you can see the status of your alarm outputs if you need to. Right, so this is actually sufficient in order for the alarm condition to work. Now I'm going to demonstrate the physical connections. Now the first thing is there are two relays inside. Now as I said earlier, this particular NVR has two alarm outputs. So that is one alarm output and that is one alarm output. Notice they are independent from each other. Now the specifications of these relays are important because users need to know how much current can pass through the contacts or how much current the contacts can open or close. So over here, I've just printed out the relay specifications for this NVR. Now, the first thing is if you're using a DC load, it can only handle a DC current up to two amps with a maximum voltage of 30 volts between the terminals. If it is an AC voltage, you can only get one amp. In my case, I'm on the 230 volt system. So yes, it will work with 230 volts, which means you can connect a floodlight, for example, that runs on mains voltage and use this relay to open and close that floodlight, which I will still demonstrate. Notice it does say maximum switching current only one amp. So if you are gonna be using a floodlight, the floodlight must not exceed one amp and that includes the turn on and inrush current. Now over here, I have a multimeter. This multimeter is set to continuity. Continuity means that if I short these leads together, it makes a buzzing sound. That means it's a short circuit. So if I take my leads and I measure across the shaft of the screwdriver, it should come up as zero and a short circuit. 
There you can see it's zero and a short circuit. So why I'm showing you this is that when the relay activates, it shorts out these two terminals. So what this means is when Dawa say an alarm output, they don't mean that it alarms, they just mean that they are providing you with a switch function. We will need to connect our alarm device to these connections, but we will also need to provide it with a supply because when these close, all it is doing is closing like a switch, but the switch without a power source is not going to give us an alarm condition. So I will still show how to connect the power source. Right now, I'm just gonna show the operation of the relay. Right, I've now brought the camera closer. I have my two leads across the normally open relay terminals. I'm now gonna put my hand in front of the camera to initiate a motion detection, which should then output an alarm. In this case, it will close the relay contacts, which should close the relay contacts. Notice how my meter now says zero, and the meter now makes that buzzing sound. This will stay on for about 15 seconds. The reason why it's 15 seconds is on the settings, I had chosen a latch time of 10 seconds and there was an anti-dither time of five seconds. If I add those together, I get 15 seconds. So over here, I have an anti-dither of five and a latch of five. If I now reduce this to a latch of three, what happens is the total time that the relay is closed will now be eight seconds. You might want it very long or you might want it very short. If you're just using this to interface to an alarm system, maybe you've got a standalone alarm that you want to connect your NVR to, then you only need a short time. But if you're going to be connecting it to a floodlight, you might want it on for even three, four minutes. I now say apply and now I can demonstrate the wiring connections. Right, so now with the new settings, I can just check that they have taken effect. I've got my meter here and I'm going to initiate the alarm and one, two. Right, for the first setup, I'm going to use the NVR output with a DC 12 volt siren. So as I move my hand in front of the camera or there's an intruder on the property, a DC siren should alarm. So over here, I have the normally open number one and the common for number one. So I will need to wire that into that terminal and that terminal. It may be different on your NVR. Now notice from my battery, I'm going to the input of the relay, which is normally open one. The output of the relay goes to the siren's positive connection. Then the output of the siren goes back to the battery. I'll now show you the wiring as follows. Right, for this example, I'm just using a 12 volt battery as my power supply. So from the diagram, it goes positive to the input of the relay. So here's my positive wire, and it goes to the input of the relay then the output of the relay must be connected to my siren. Right, so over here I have my siren. The positive wire of my siren is this one. So as you can see, I'm connecting that to the positive of my siren. Now the negative wire of my siren returns to the battery. So over here, I put the negative wire onto my negative of my siren. So there is my series circuit. Right, now I've moved the camera close by. So you can see that when I put my hand in front of the camera, the siren will go off. The siren goes off for that predetermined time. Right, in the next setup, I'm going to demonstrate how to connect an AC floodlight as your alarm output. I still use the normally open and the common connections. The only difference is now my source is an AC supply. And in this case, it's 230 volts, which means there is a significant shock hazard at this point. You've got to be careful now because you can't get an electric shock. Now, from the supply, I'll have a live and a neutral. Now, in your case, you will have your country specific plug. But in my case, the live is there and the neutral is there. Now, shown more commonly as the brown wire is the live and the blue is the neutral. So we can see that the live is going to the input of the normally open one relay. So there's my live wire, the brown going there. If you follow this white wire, it goes to the relay. Then the output of the common of the relay, there it comes, this white wire, goes to the load, which is my light. So in this case, there's the brown wire of my floodlight. Here's my floodlight, this is the load, and there comes the brown wire going through the load, in which in this case is a floodlight, and it returns via the neutral. So there I'm returning to the supply via the neutral. 
So over here, I have my floodlight connected as the alarm output. So when I put my hand in front of the camera, you can see how the floodlight is now staying on. This will stay on for about eight seconds according to the latch time that I set on the NVR. Now in a real world installation, you would need to keep your AC wires separate from the NVR, which means you'll need to have a junction box and possibly a second relay. People do not expect to have AC wires on the back of an NVR and there's a significant shock hazard. Therefore, I suggest you use a DC relay and then the AC side is kept in an isolated box so that there's no chance of a shock because somebody might be working with the NVR or pull on the wire and there you go, you have an electric hazard because it could just pull out of the back of the NVR. Right, now some comments about the relay. Try to put the positive, either the live or if you're using the DC, the 12 volt should be on this side. You're opening and closing the live side. That stops a live voltage from sitting across this light when the light is not switched on. For example, if you had the live there and the neutral there, a live voltage would always be sitting here and this becomes a bit of a hazard. So rather open and close the live side. The same is true for the siren connection. Rather open and close the 12 volt than the negative. Now, does it matter if you connected the positive to this terminal or to that terminal? For example, if these two were swapped, it wouldn't make any difference because all the NVR is providing is just a switch. It's just a controlled switch, so it doesn't really matter if you have the live there or the live there in terms of the wiring. What is more important is that you're opening and closing the live side rather than the neutral side. Right, over here I have a control power supply. So how this works is you would connect this power supply to your mains and the power supply allows me to have several 12 volt outputs. Now not all these backup power supplies have so many outputs. The most common ones just have one set of outputs. Over here I've connected one of the outputs. There's the 12 volts and there's the common. All right, so here I'm measuring 11 volts. It's just because my battery is not charged. And why I'm using this is it's very common that people use external power supplies to power up their devices. So for example, if you wanna use that siren or if you wanna use a strobe light, then you would need a power supply. So earlier I had connected directly to a 12 volt battery, but what's better is to use a power supply such as this. So all the NVR is doing is just opening and closing those contacts to allow this light to go on or off. And what you may also notice is that this is a 12 volt floodlight. Earlier, I showed a line voltage floodlight. As you can see, this one is 220 to 240 volt input. But if you're worried about using higher voltages, you can buy 12 volt lights. So this is actually a 12 volt light, and therefore there's no shock hazard here. And as you can see, I've connected it in the same way. It's just that my supply is now a backup power supply in the form of a, of a 17 amp hour battery and its own power supply which could be plugged into the main. The point is, is that coming out from there is only 12 volts. Now coming back to the NVR, and then just a reminder, there's the alarm output, one or two. Now if you wanted a siren and a light, you could have them both on and then use both relay contacts, relay one and relay two. In this case, you would connect relay one to the top row and relay two would be there and there, which correlates to that and that.